Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Weren't the Olympics fabulous? Australia attracted visitors from all over the world and who didn't dream of billeting the Italian men's diving team? <sighs> the problem is that some of our visitors were never invited in the first place and once here, they just won't go home. We call these people refugees. Let's face it, refugees aren't going to go away. But you can help by opening your heart and arms and being the first in your crescent to billet your very own family of refugees. Now, as sympathetic as we are to the plight of these people, we don't want them traipsing through the house. So Todd is going to show us how to build refugee accommodation in our very own backyard. Thanks, Sigourney. Now, billeting your own refugees is a great idea. They're a great help around the house and there's someone for the kiddies to play with. But you'll need somewhere to keep them. Ever since the big brains at local council banned chooks in the backyard, there's been no use for these until now. I'm going to turn this old chook run into a viable compound to house your refugees. All right, let's get stuck in. The first thing you have to do is make sure the fencing posts of your enclosure are nice and sturdy. Even boat-starved refugees will be a little feistier than chickens. Here's a green tip from Todd. This corrugated iron roof, salvaged from the old chook run, can be recycled and used as a new roof to shelter your compound. Next up, wrap some wire fencing around the compound. Something strong with a nice open weave that'll let them enjoy the view. Now, if your chook run was built properly, the wire should go about two feet beneath the ground. This is to stop the foxes digging their way in. Make sure it's still there, because the last thing you want is civil libertarians getting in. Then you have to stop your refugees getting out. Now, just because they don't speak English doesn't mean they're stupid. They have proven to be very resourceful getting out of places they don't want to be. So, simply nail some razor wire along the top of your compound. G'day. G'day, little mate. Oh, yeah, fella. Lastly, get yourself a good, sturdy door. With as many locks as a budget will cater for. It's as simple as that. Turn your old chook run from this into this. Doesn't that look great? Now, here's Sigourney to tell us how to best use our backyard refugees around the house. Thanks, Todd. It's a relief to know that those lucky refugees have a roof over their heads. Now, here are some of the practical advantages of giving these exiled peoples a chance at a better life. Your refugees don't just help you with your domestic duties. They're also a renovator's delight. And the children just love helping mum and dad. You've just missed the spot. And those little hands are fabulous at getting into those hard to reach places. Have you found that ring yet? Here, I'll just stir it up a bit for you. And most importantly, remember that these people are more than just refugees. They're human beings. And sometimes, nothing beats the quality of hand stitching. So why not rent your backyard refugees out to your neighbours and local businesses? That's lovely, darling. Only 4,900 more to go.